She stared at her phone until it went black, but she didn't receive a word of thanks from her father. She chuckled at herself before tossing the phone on the table. Ms. Sherwood, Dr. Thurman is here, the assistant announced as Marcus entered the office. Seeing him come inside. Giselle gestured to her assistant to leave. Please have a seat here, Giselle said as she stood up. Her office was spacious, with a special area for meetings and negotiations. She led Marcus to the sofa by the window wall. As soon as Marcus was inside the room, he smelled a strong scent of coffee. He looked at the half-drunk cup of coffee on the table and frowned. Why are you still drinking coffee? Is there a problem with that? Giselle pushed the teapot towards him and casually asked, What brings you here today? Marcus sat down and said, Looks like you forgot everything I said to you last night. Giselle's outstretched hand suddenly stiffened, and she quietly sat back on the sofa, hanging her head like a child who had done something wrong. Today, no matter what, you have to come with me to the hospital, Marcus said. Giselle looked up, not at Marcus, but at a pot of withered greenery beside her. She murmured, what for? For a thorough checkup, to determine a treatment plan, and to be admitted to the hospital, Marcus replied. He scrutinized Giselle closely. It had only been a month since he had last seen her, and she had become so thin. He couldn't imagine how someone who used to cry at the thought of getting a shot for a cold could endure the pain of a stomach cancer attack. Giselle shook her head. The stray hair on her forehead covering her emotions. Marcus, my illness is like this plant. The roots are already rotten, and no matter how much treatment I get, it won't be cured. Gigi, how do you know it won't work if you don't try? You can work day and night. Spend four years pleasing a man who doesn't love you, but why don't you spend a little time on your own health? Marcus felt that Giselle deserved better, considering that she was not yet twenty-four. She should be healthy, happy, full of vitality, enjoying the best years of her life. Instead of being trapped in a dull marriage, consumed by work, and certainly not enduring the torment of cancer. Marcus walked up to Giselle, as he had done in the past, and stroked her head. With today's medical advancements. As long as you don't give up and undergo proper treatment and surgery, there is. He paused mid sentence because he saw Giselle's eyes turning red. Giselle stroked a withered leaf in her hand and whispered, Then tell me, what is the success rate of the surgery? Is it 50%, 20%, or 0.1%? Marcus pursed his lips and remained silent. Forget it. Giselle smiled, pulling at the cracked corners of her lips. You don't have to say anything. Better not to give me any hope. Giselle understood Marcus's meaning. Who didn't want to live? Who didn't want a healthy body? But she had never heard of someone with late-stage stomach cancer surviving. With a sudden force, Giselle crushed the withered leaf in her hand, and it crumbled into dust between her fingers. Giselle's eyes were dark, devoid of any sign of life. Which made Marcus feel anxious. Gigi, don't you want anything? he asked. I do, Giselle's gaze went blank for a moment, and her face suddenly turned cold. She covered her eyes with her hand, her palm moist. It was only then that she realized she was crying. Marcus. What have I not had in my life? Except for never seeing my mother, I've had everything. Wealth, power, even the person I've loved for so many years is by my side. Everything she wanted was right in front of her, within reach, yet she couldn't have it. Giselle clearly didn't want to discuss the topic any further, so she turned around and sat down in front of her computer to continue working on the files. Marcus had come here today to persuade her, but it was as if he hadn't said anything. The current Giselle had shut herself off in a small, dim space where no one could enter. Does Jensen know you're sick? Marcus asked.